What's up everybody? Alice here and today we are talking about fitness for hiking and backpacking. What you need to do to get in shape and stay in shape so you're always ready to hit the trail. If you guys are new here then make sure you hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I share all kinds of hiking, backpacking, and travel related content on here from national parks to epic adventures in countries far and near. And if this is your first video in this series, you're gonna to wanna to check out the rest of my hiking preparation videos where I share some tips and tricks on my essentials, what I bring hiking and backpacking, and how you can get started if you are new to hiking as well. So let's get into the video and talk more about some of these things that you need to add to your fitness regime and starting with goal setting. So. Goal setting is super important to make sure that you not only keep yourself accountable, but to make sure you actually have something in mind. It's hard to kind of accomplish anything if we don't have an end goal in mind. So whether that's, you know, hiking some 14ers in Colorado or going on the Continental Divide Trail or the PCT, or maybe just hiking your first mountain in your local city, town, or state, you know, set a goal for yourself and then you can kind of figure out everything that's going to get you there from that point. And to keep yourself accountable, I want you to not only say it out loud right now, but leave a comment down below with what your goal is and be specific, be as specific as you possibly can. You know, I've hiked a lot of different mountains over the years, but for every one, I set myself up with a goal for that. You know, when I did Kilimanjaro, I started training for that three to four months in advance and I knew that that was my end goal. I knew that I needed a certain level of fitness going into that climb as well. And I actually have a 12 week training guide on my website that you guys can check out too, which has a link down in the description. You guys can download that for free as well. And that was the routine that I stuck with when I trained for that hike. But you know, last summer I did Longs Peak and there were some things that I had to do to prepare for that. And right now I'm getting ready for spring and summer hiking. Today I actually went on an eight mile speed hike and that was part of my training for this week. You know, if you can add hiking to your training regime every week, that's awesome. And that is a really good way to add mileage and experience to your body and your, your trail experience. But if you can't do that, you know, there's a lot of other things that you should be adding into your kind of workout routine. And the first one is things that work on your endurance. And the way that I work on my endurance is by running and walking. So I aim to do about 10,000 steps every day as far as walking. You know, if you have an Apple Watch or a pedometer or anything else that tracks your steps, I recommend wearing it and setting a goal for yourself. 10,000 steps is about five miles a day, which I easily do when I am on the job. And when I'm not, I try to just do like a morning walk and an evening walk and walk instead of driving my car to as many places as possible. As far as running goes, I like to do a long run once a week, which can be anywhere from like four to five miles, which I know that's not that long, but my shorter runs or more moderate runs are usually about two and a half to three and a half miles. And I like to do some interval training as well. So if you don't have access to go outside for running, I recommend hopping on a treadmill and doing basically three days of running. On one of the days, you're gonna do like a longer, just nice, easy pace run at six miles an hour or maybe five, whatever it is for you, pick that speed that works best for you, especially if you're just getting into running. On the second day, I want you to do a speed interval. So a speed interval, basically, you're gonna do like a five minute warm up where you're walking and kind of gradually jogging, getting a little bit faster for five minutes. And then when your speed interval starts, you're going to pick a specific speed, probably four miles an hour, and then you're going to gradually increase your speed by 0.5 miles per hour every minute. And I want you to go up as high as you can, hopefully to eight miles an hour, do each half a mile an hour for one minute and then you're gonna go all the way up and you're gonna go all the way back down and then you're gonna do another five minute cool down at the end. So that's the speed ladder. And there's two different ways I do the speed ladder. I do it that way. There's also another 
kind of gradual interval ladder that I do where I do five minutes at each mile per hour, but I do it from five and a half up to eight and then back down, or I just end at eight and then do a cool down. So those are kind of the two different ones. And then as far as an incline interval, that's what you're gonna do on the third day. So the incline interval, same kind of idea behind it. You're going to um, pick a speed. I usually do like a five mile an hour for the um, hill interval workout because it's not too fast and it's not too slow. But as I said, pick what works for you and obviously start out gradually. You don't wanna just jump into this kind of stuff if you've never done it before. So I pick my five miles per hour, I do my five minute warm up, and then I basically start at zero incline and I go up to six, seven, sometimes 10, and then I go back down. I try to do at least one or two full percentage points of that incline every minute and then go all the way back down and then do a cool down. So those are some of my treadmill workouts that I do and I'm gonna be putting together a blog post where you can get a downloadable of all of these also over on the blog. So if you can't run, you can do other kind of endurance training like riding a bike. You can also swim, which is another great way to build your endurance. Um, and then as far as like gym equipment goes, I would recommend biking over something like the elliptical because I've <laughs> spent many time on the elliptical you know, when I've been injured and I really don't think you get a very good workout. I really don't think it really builds your endurance much. However, when I was preparing for Kilimanjaro, I did spend about an hour a day on my elliptical at home with an oxygen deprivation mask on um, to kind of give me an idea of how little oxygen I would have on that climb. So I think if you're really sending it, an elliptical can be a good workout, but it does not replace, in my mind, running, swimming, or biking. I think those are much better ways to build your endurance than an elliptical. Now, the next kind of workouts you need to add to your weekly or at least bi-weekly routine is hills and stairs. And these are probably my least favorite thing to do because it's hard. But I will say, like, it's the one thing you notice the most on a mountain. If you haven't done any stairs, if you haven't walked on any hills, as soon as you go on a hike with a lot of elevation, you are going to feel it in your butt and your glutes. So it's really important to do some hill and stair workouts. And, you know, I live in a fl very flat place, especially in Los Angeles. There's really not very many hills. So adding hill and stair workouts isn't always the easiest. And if you're like that as well, my recommendation for you would to be, if you can find a hill, great. And if you can't find a stadium, um, a staircase, uh, whatever it is that you can find to try and do some sort of interval training on stairs or hills. You now, if you can find a hill, pick a number, go to this hill, I want you to walk or run up it walk back down, give yourself a 20 to 30 second rest, and then do it again. Now, when I do like speed and hill intervals, I usually go out there with the intention of doing a set amount. Like I might go and do 200 meter sprints, but I might say, okay, I'm gonna try to do six today and I'll do a 200 meter sprint. I'll walk the rest of the way around and then I'll do it again. So you're giving your body a little bit of time to recover letting your heart rate come down a little, and then you're really sending it again. And this is what I recommend for hills and stairs. If you can do either one of those, it's a really great addition to your workout to get ready for any sort of high elevation or steep terrain that you're going to face when you're out hiking. If you live in a place that's cold, maybe you don't have access to a hill or anywhere where you can find stairs, get on the stair stepper, try to stay on there for 30 to 45 minutes, and also change up the speed that you're going on there and the level of resistance so that you kind of get a little bit of variety as well and change the level of, you know, of effort that you're putting into that as well. Maybe you don't have an access to a stair stepper. Maybe you don't have an access to a hill or a staircase. Well then, plyometrics are gonna be your best friend. I don't care if you find a chair or your sofa, a park bench, it is so instrumental, I think, to overall fitness to continue to do plyometrics, which is like doing things like box hops or step ups onto a box, step off the box, up and over, 
hopping on one foot up and over. So those are the things, the little agile things that really put a bit more pressure on your knees and your ankles that you're gonna wanna do because that really adds to your overall leg strength. And guys, hiking is a lot of leg strength and we definitely need to be agile and work on those little muscles in our feet and our ankles and our knees because as you know, there's a lot of loose terrain out there depending on where you're gonna hike. And if we don't work on all those stabilizer muscles in our legs, we can easily roll an ankle, sprain a knee, or end up in a situation where we might need to get rescued and we wanna try and avoid all that. So this takes us to kind of our last couple of things that we wanna throw into our workouts. A couple days a week, I also do HIT workouts, which are high intensity interval training. And the reason why HIT workouts are really great is because most of the time they're really, really great. Usually body weight stuff where you're working your entire body, but you're keeping your heart rate elevated the whole entire workout. So you might be doing something like burpees and then squats and then push-ups and then dips and then a plank or something like that. So it's really great because it's a total body workout. And the thing with hiking and backpacking guys is like, it's a whole body workout. Your backpack is gonna be heavy depending on where you're hiking or how long you're hiking. So you're gonna wanna work on your shoulder strength and your arm strength. Your hip, leg, and joint muscles are all gonna be fatigued as well. So it's really important to work every muscle and every little teeny tiny muscle in your body as well. Because as I just said, you know, the terrain is very varied. When you get tired, especially when you're hiking and backpacking, it's very easy to trip over a root or slip on a rock. And if you haven't worked on those little connector muscles and the things that help us from falling, you're gonna get seriously injured if and when you do fall over. I mean, I tripped today on my um, little hike today. I slipped on a rock and almost fell over. And a lot of people probably would have sprained an ankle doing that, but I've spent a lot of time working on my joint strength and that's something that you guys need to add into your repertoire as well. You know, YouTube is such a great place to find fitness videos and it's free. So get a little mat in your living room and do a couple of these workouts two to three days a week, which would be great for your overall fitness. Find some people that you like the last thing that I add into my weekly workouts is yoga. Now, for those of you that hike and backpack a lot already, you probably notice that your hips, your hamstrings, your calf muscles all get super, super tight. I am the same way, um, especially because at my job, I stand pretty much all day long for eight to 12 hours and adding that with hiking and then especially if I'm running as well during the week, you get really tight. So it's really important to stretch. And for me, I find that yoga really helps me do that because it really, you know, adds in like a flow of stretching and a little bit of exercise. So I do a yoga flow every morning. I really love the channel Boho Beautiful, which is here on YouTube um, and the woman that does that. So um, she has some really great under 20 minute workouts, which really get me going before work and remind me that I need to stretch. So stretching is super important to make sure you're doing it after your hikes as well. So those are my workouts for the week. I do a mixture of endurance training, HIIT workouts, and yoga, and throw in some stair and hill workouts in there as well. And this is what I recommend for you guys if you are going out, trying to get in shape for this season of hiking and you wanna stay in shape throughout the year too. So feel free to drop any questions or comments that you have about this kind of workout routine. As I said, I'll have some links in the description to my blog where you can get some of these workouts that I've mentioned in this, as well as my 12 week training guide if you haven't already downloaded that before. And I did wanna also mention just a couple of tips that I wanted to share about high elevation hikes. I have had a lot of questions from people uh, especially people that are heading out west this summer where there are some more high elevation climbs and how to really get prepared for that and you know not worry about maybe getting altitude sickness you know altitude sickness can affect anyone and everyone people can get it at altitudes as low as 8,000 feet um, normally I would say people don't usually start feeling it until they're in about 10,000 feet of elevation but You'll want to stay really well hydrated and 
really well fed when you're at high elevation. If you are planning on going to hike some 14ers or higher mountains, I recommend going to wherever it is the mountain is and acclimating for one to three nights. The longer, the better, obviously, to acclimate um, is going to give you a much better chance. And you'll also want to avoid alcohol for three days before any high altitude hikes. Alcohol has a serious effect on the way our body acclimates and drinking at high elevation is not going to make you feel very good. So definitely avoid that as well and get a lot of rest as well, especially if you're doing some multi-day hiking. If you're sleeping out on the mountain, you're going to want to try and get as much sleep as you can and eat a lot of food. One of the things they did on Kilimanjaro was just really give us a lot of food and really stay well hydrated. I started to get altitude sickness after we hiked to about 16,000 feet on our third day and then we spent the night at 12 and I really quickly descended from our, you know, height that day to camp and I felt really bad, but I drank like probably four big water bottles full of water and tea, got a really good night's sleep and the next day I felt better. So well rested, well hydrated, well fed and avoid alcohol. You're going to do a lot better on those high elevation hikes if you follow those short little guidelines. And I'm excited for you guys to head out this summer and this spring with me. I'm going to be heading out on a lot of trails this summer as well. So let me know. Definitely share your fitness goals down below. And if you have any specific questions about what you should do, maybe for your body or your fitness level, I'm happy to answer them. Make sure you connect with me on Instagram as well. And I will see you guys out on the trail and also in another one of these hiking preparation videos very soon. So make sure you guys subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and turn on those notifications too.